Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's topic is what does low-level light therapy or low-level laser therapy do? And what are the benefits? And so low-level laser therapy, low-level light therapy is been a pretty common therapy over the last 10 to 15 years, especially for wound healing. Um, and it used to be a more, um, I guess, popular treatment in, in the past before medications. And all it is is using light, using uh, light that is outside of the typical color spectrum. Um, to activate different cells and activate the mitochondria within cells in order to improve healing. And so low-level light therapy has kind of broadened its use for different treatments and different modalities, different diseases over the last 10 to 15 years. And now we are using it a lot on our brains. And we know that light therapy can penetrate through the skull and get into the brain. And it can have beneficial effects for many issues, whether they are traumatic brain injury, whether they are neurodegenerative diseases or psychiatric diseases. And um, there are many studies on them. And so we use them in our clinic every single day. Um, maybe everybody gets them, maybe not. Um, it really depends on each individual case and, and what their testing looks like. But we use it, and it can not only benefit with long-term use, uh, but even at-home use as well uh, with low-level light therapy. And so there are many products out there, um, and I'm just going to talk about the ones that we use. And so let's first talk about an article that shows or that talks about low-level light therapy. And so this article is called Shining Light on the Head, Photobiomodulation for Brain Disorders. Uh, it's from 2016. And photobiomodulation is the new term for low-level light therapy. It's basically saying what is happening uh, at a cellular level. And so photo, meaning light, is modulating a biological system or a biological cell. And so let's talk about this paper here. And so photobiomodulation describes the use of red or near-infrared light. Again, this is higher than a typical color spectrum. Like red obviously is in our color, but then near-infrared is not necessarily in our color spectrum. Um, to stimulate he and heal, generate, regenerate, and protect tissue that is either injured or is degenerating or at risk of dying. And so... The brain suffers from many disorders like traumatic events, like strokes, traumatic brain injury, uh, degenerative diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and psychiatric disorders, depression, anxiety, PTSD. And there has been shown to be beneficial effects of applying this near infrared laser red light to the head. Um, and there's even been shown that, that photobiomodulation can improve cognition in normal people, which is pretty cool. Um, they're relatively inexpensive and they can come in these different brain caps or a separate like laser that you hold and put on your head. Uh, and it really just kind of depends. And so I want to talk about the effects and how this actually works because it's pretty cool. And it is all about affecting the mitochondria, um, specifically cytochrome C oxidase. So let's go right to this picture. I'm sorry, that's a little blurry. Um, so here we have light. Light therapy comes in through the skull and activates the neuron, okay? And inside the neuron, we have a nucleus and we have mitochondria, right? There are the mitochondria. And so this light therapy can go through and it can activate cytochrome C oxidase, chrome uh, meaning color. And so it is attracted, or light is attracted to it. And this cytochrome C oxidase is a part of our electron transport chain that helps make most of the ATP in our mitochondria. And by activating it, it actually makes it more efficient. Um, there are like copper atoms in here and iron atoms in here. And so this light attracts it and it activates it, 
and therefore makes it more efficient for when it's transferring electrons over to then make uh, ATP from the ATP synthase, okay? And so here it kind of shows the effects. Um, it helps increase ATP. Um, it actually helps, what it does is it increases nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is then a regulator of transcription factors. And it actually slightly increases reactive oxygen species initially to then therefore increase gene expression from the nucleus to make more antioxidant enzymes to control free radicals, control react or oxidative stress. Um, and so if we go back, that's kind of what it says here. Um, the cytochrome C oxidase enzyme may be inhibited by nitric oxide uh, in damaged or hypoxic cells, but this inhibitory uh, nitric oxide can be dissociated by, from the photons of light during this process. And this dissociation then causes the nitric oxide down here to then go to the nucleus and change gene expression. Um, so that's that. There are three major benefits of the, this mitochondria being able to be more efficient within the cell and causing this increase in ATP um, and these genetic, uh, these gene changes. There's short-term stimulation like ATP increase, blood flow increase, lymphatic flow increase to decrease or to get rid of waste, um, cerebral oxygenation, decreasing edema. There are neuroprotective effects like upregulating anti-apoptotic proteins, basically preventing cells from dying that may be close, decreasing excitotoxicity, increasing endogenous natural made antioxidants, decreasing inflammation. And then it can also help the brain repair itself by uh, neurogenesis, making new cells, neurotrophins, helping with synaptic plasticity, and that's also synaptogenesis as well, making new synapses. So here's a picture showing those. And so all the ones here on the left, increasing blood flow, decreasing edema, increasing lymphatic drainage to get rid of waste that kind of builds up in neurodegeneration, um, increasing blood flow and oxygenation, uh, decreasing excitotoxicity, decreasing inflammation, uh, improving antioxidants like uh, superoxide dismutase, uh, increasing BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and increasing synapto, uh, synaptogenesis to help with synapses and neuroplasticity. So um, it's pretty cool what um, these, what low-level light therapy or photobiomodulation can do for the brain. Uh, and it can be very beneficial in many people. Um, so here's just one article from 2017 showing significant improvement in cognition in mild to moderate uh, dementia cases. So it's just a case report, but it used this transcranial over the head and intranasal inside the nose photobiomodulation. And these were violites, okay, which is what we use here in our clinic. And I'll show you in a sec. Um, but there's been evidence to show that um, that this photobiomodulation can affect Alzheimer's disease, dementia in rats, and so they did it on humans. And so we know the dorsal, or sorry, the default mode network, which is in a few different places within the brain that can help to kind of get the brain to be regulated uh, in a resting state, uh, can be activated and therefore improve with um, improved function especially in dementia patients. And so five patients with mild to moderate severe cognitive impairment entered into a 12-week study um, and then a follow-up after no treatment. And there was significant improvement after the 12 weeks of the photobiomodulation with a decrease in the mini mental state exam, uh, which is the main exam that is used to look for dementia uh, and cognition. There is also increased function, better sleep, fewer angry outbursts, less anxiety in these patients, and less wandering as well. Um, so these results suggest that there are, that there are these larger controlled studies need to be warranted, right? I mean, this was only five people, um, but it also shows that PBM, photobiomodulation, can be used as a home treatment for patients with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And that's important because 
if people can use it at home constantly, they can continue to be helping to heal their brain, um, to get rid of waste that builds up in these, in, in these uh, factors, um, in these diseases, uh, but also increase synaptogenesis and, and help with overall brain function. And so let's just go right to the picture of the setup and I'll show you ours as well. And so here is the Vilite, um, Vilite Neuro. And there are two different wavelengths we can go. We can go alpha or, or uh, gamma. And so it really depends on your exam, what we do, but it activates the default mode network in these different areas. And so I'll show you here on myself, we have the Vilite. And so it kind of sits in here so that we have one kind of in the frontal region, in the midline, and then we have two in the parietal area, and one in the midline in the, also the parietal area, more the precumulus. These are areas of the default mode network. And the default mode network um, is again, what's going to help to regulate that brain in a resting state. And then the nasal applicator is more for the lower medial temporal um, area that's important in memory. Um, mainly the hippocampus. So what's pretty cool, let's go back. So what's pretty cool about bilites and about photobiomodulation is that it's great for any kind of brain injury, um, stroke, traumatic brain injury, for neurodegeneration, uh, for kids um, that have cognition issues, for healthy people with cognitive issues, for psychiatric disorders. And so we use it a lot. And, um, but again, it really depends, do you need it or do you not? And that's where we run a QEG or a quantified electroencephalogram and really kind of determine how, it, how are your brain waves functioning and what could you use more of? So that's photobiomodulation, low level light therapy, really important in helping mitochondria help heal neurons. And if we heal neurons, we heal brain tissue, we can function better. So. Uh, thank you for listening today. If you have any comments or suggestions for future comics, please leave them below. If you have any other questions or concerns, I'd love to hear them as well. So thank you and stay healthy.